Hey guys, so today's video is going to be all about tan foot mouth, what it is, how to prevent it, how to treat it if you've been cursed by it. So many people DM'd me when I talked about this on Instagram, what is hand foot mouth? Like there was a lot of DMs, I did not know what it was. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we need to spread awareness on it. And I need to do a video basically talking about how we've been treating it. And because the one bad thing about it is that it is a virus, so you can't necessarily treat it with antibiotics. We are treating other things with antibiotics, which I will get into, which makes our case a little bit not super unique because this does happen quite commonly, but we'll get into that. Anyways, to kind of give you guys a background of what hand foot mouth is, let me just tell you what it says on here. Hand foot mouth disease is a common infection caused by a group of viruses. It typically begins with a fever and feeling generally unwell. This is followed by a day or two later by flat discolored spots or bumps that may blister on the hands, feet, and mouth, and occasionally the buttocks and groin. Signs and symptoms nearly appear three to six days after exposure to the virus. The rash generally resolves on its own in about a week. Fingernail and toenail loss may occur a few weeks later, but will regrow with time. So there is times where they will lose their fingernails, but don't fret, there is another nail right underneath there. So anyways, it is extremely contagious. The reason why I give you a quick background story of how this came about. I put Riley into a daycare that is a very small daycare to avoid her getting sick a lot less, which has really helped because honestly, the only last two times she's been sick, it's because of me, because I had the flu from Disneyland and then because Joel got a cold from traveling. I got sick, she got sick, he got sick, she got sick. So that's how she's been getting sick, is from us, <laughs> not from daycare as much. So I put her in a really small daycare. There's only two other kids, they're younger than her. So I've done that with her and just this kind of, unfortunate event is really due to a parents, I have to say, their lack of knowledge of this and how contagious it really is and how mindful they should have been about it. So anyways, um, when my brother's little son came down with hand foot mouth the first week that he was at daycare, he went to a different daycare. We kept them all away from all the babies and from the houses because we knew that they, even though they had no symptoms, they could still be carriers for it. And that's where you need to be very knowledgeable about it. So this is where the parent lacked the information and the knowledge of this was we found out that the child was with another child of the family that was exposed to hand, foot, mouth. And they thought, oh, since he didn't get it right away, he doesn't have it and sent him to daycare. Well, Riley was exposed on Thursday and Friday of one week and just because the both of them were there for Thursday and Friday, so it could have hit her on Thursday, it could have hit her off from Friday is when she was exposed. She was exposed to it those days. We did not know about this exposure. We did not know anything about her being exposed to hand foot mouth yet. Saturday, we went over to my sister's house, which I will get into. We went over to my sister's house for two hours, played around, Dole was out of town, so I was hanging out a lot with family, but it was mainly just my house or her house. So we did that. Monday comes around. I get a text message about, there possibly being a hand, foot, mouth exposure. So we found out that the little boy from daycare has hand, foot, mouth. We found out that he was around someone who was exposed to it. If you put your child around someone that was exposed to hand, foot, mouth, you need to keep away, keep that child away from any other kids for three to six days to see if they're gonna get the symptoms and if it's gonna come up out because it's so contagious. Needless to say, Riley got exposed to it. We just found out yesterday that Caspi was exposed to it that Saturday. So Caspi now has hand, foot, mouth. That is how contagious it is. If you guys don't know who Caspi is, Caspian is my nephew. He is four months old, my sister's son. Um, doesn't leave the house really. They're still indoors all the time. So I felt so bad, but luckily since she is breastfeeding, which is the best thing, this is like another really good treatment is if your child does get hand, foot, mouth and you are breastfeeding, breastfeed like crazy, it has really subdued the symptoms and made it very minimal for him. So he only had a low fever for a day and he won't take Tylenol, he refused, <laughs> he spits it out, but he was totally fine. He wasn't fussy, he's been, he acts completely normal. So he doesn't even act like he has hand, foot, mouth, but she got it confirmed by the doctor that it is because it's in his mouth and it's all over his body. 
but he's been totally fine, thank goodness. So the breastfeeding has really helped him there. Um, so I just kind of want to talk about like how contagious it is and in those situations, if you know that someone has been exposed to hand, foot, mouth, you need to stay clear of them. Wash your hands like crazy. Keep all kids near them because their immune systems are so weak at this time. They're not strong. So they cannot, so they will be very, very susceptible to it. Adults, it's a lot harder for adults to get. Adults can get it. There are different strains to it, so you can get also hand, foot, mouth multiple times. I had it when I was younger, so I am less vulnerable to it from what the pediatrician told me, but she goes, there is still a chance that you can get it because it could be a different strain from what you've had. So we've just been disinfecting like crazy. We've been washing our hands like crazy. We've been cleaning Riley like crazy. And I'm gonna have a bunch of, like I have a bunch of products here of what has really helped us, but I really just wanted to put awareness of what hand, foot, mouth is. It's basically these bumps. So what starts out is a high fever. Riley got a high fever Monday night at 11 p.m. at 103.8. Gave her some Tylenol, she went right down. She slept with me that night. And the next morning she was just very, just not herself. Like she was actually laying down with me and cuddling, which is unheard of. So that means she's not feeling well. Um, about 6 p.m. on Tuesday night is when the bump started. I was hoping that she was just not feeling well or maybe she was teething. And I was like, please don't let this be hand, foot, mouth. But the bumps will pop out about 24 hours later which is about around the time that they hers popped out. So hers popped out on her cheeks. So that is what you want to look for is 24 hours later is when the bumps will pop out. So just also know that they're not in the clear until after a week after exposure. Um, three to six days is usually when the symptoms will start to show, which is what happened with Riley. There's that. Um, so with Riley, she got the bumps and they started popping up on her face. I'll have pictures pop up here. It was so hard. Um, she, they started popping up on her face. So Tuesday night, I was like, should I take her to urgent care? I go, well, if this is hand, foot, mouth, they're just gonna tell me Tylenol and stuff like that. So I go, okay, you know what? She's asleep right now. I'm gonna let her sleep. We're gonna call the doctor in the morning. So we called the doctor Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. when they opened up for her pediatrician office because I didn't want to deal with urgent care or anything. I just wanted to talk to her pediatrician. So we, I spoke to them and I sent them in a picture, which is great. It's like a text message into the portal. <laughs> sent them in pictures of her face. They were really worried. They were like, okay, is this hand, foot, mouth? Was the other kid diagnosed with that? And I go, this is what I was told. They're like, we still want her to come in because this isn't looking like hand, foot, mouth. So I brought her in to the doctors and it came to be that she actually has impetigo with hand, foot, mouth. Impetigo is a bacteria. Let me give you guys a definition of it. So impetigo is a highly contagious skin infection that result causes red sores on the face. It mainly affects infants and children. It can affect adults too, because my sister had it when she was in high school, which is why I have a background knowledge of what impetigo was. And when I saw her face, I was like, this looks like impetigo, <laughs> but I kept being told hand, foot, mouth. So anyways, it's short term. It resolves within days to weeks, treatable by medical professionals, spreads by skin to skin contact, requires a medical diagnosis, lab tests or imaging rarely required. Okay. So anyways, it can spread from handshakes or hugs. So we are really having to be very cautious with her. Um, the main symptom is red sores that form around the nose and the mouth, the sores rupture and ooze for days and the yellow brown crust. So that is what's going on with her. So when we went in there, they told us skin infection and, and hand fit mouth because she has it in her mouth. Impetigo does not go inside the mouth. And so she had a conjunction and basically she could have gotten the impetigo from the other child if he had it. If he didn't have it, then what happened was we all had bacteria on her skin. So when she got the hand, foot, mouth, is it opened up a portal for that bacteria to come in. And since she is eczema prone and she doesn't have like crazy eczema, but she will get flare ups here and there. And I thought that's what it was. And this just kind of proves that it was. Um, it opened up the portal for that bacteria to come into the skin and create impetigo. So that is what she has too. So her face was far worse 
than I think hand, foot, mouth faces usually are because of the impetigo that she's went through. She had the crustiness all around her nose. I was so worried that she wasn't gonna be able to breathe through her nose. Um, but yeah, so she had that all. So what we were prescribed is we were prescribed a gel and they really wanted to hold off on the antibiotic for orally just in case, because you know, you just don't wanna give a ton of antibiotics to a child. But so we did the gel and everything. And they also told us to administer Tylenol and Advil off and on every six hours. So basically you would go with, if this is for kids over one, if they're under one, you cannot do this. Remember, always talk to your doctor. But a lot of people gave me this same little regimen online when I asked you guys about it. So we did Tylenol five milliliters because of her size. She's a big girl. So we did Tylenol the first, first okay, let's say we did Tylenol at nine o'clock a.m. Then at 12 p.m. we did Advil, which is an ibuprofen. So any Motrin or Advil, you do that at 12. Then three hours later at 3 p.m. you do Tylenol again. So every three hours you switch off from Tylenol for an Advil. So I had a timer on my phone and that really helped her be comfortable because I think the sores were hurting her and I think that she had a fever for a few days. Like she got actually like a pretty bad case of it. But that's where I think Casp is very lucky with breastfeeding is he didn't really have that. So he's just has the little marks on him. So that's been really great. So that is what we administered. And then the prescription that she did take is called Mupirocin ointment. So it's just like a little ointment that she got. This is the same one that my sister had. I told her the name and she's like, yep, that's the one I had. Um, and this one makes it just like those little sores and everything, those scabs peel right off. Like those crustiness, it just peels right off. And then also if they're hand, foot, mouth, and even that, we did Aquaphor on all the bumps. So I have been doing Aquaphor like crazy. That is the best way to do it. If you are dealing with hand, foot, mouth, or infantigo, you want to administer all types of gels with q-tips and not your fingers the reason why is because it is extremely contagious with skin to skin contact so what i do is i take a q-tip like so and i squeeze a little bit out i pull it up it's a brand new q-tip i put it on one little section of her face i turn it around i grab another piece and i put it on another section of her face i never use the same side twice i do not want it to spread so definitely do not have it spread this is one good thing about why I kind of didn't give her a bath for a few days is because I did not want it to spread into the bath and then get all over her body. Um, now that she's on the oral antibiotic, which is a pink drink that she gets twice a day, I don't have to worry about that. So I'm giving her baths every single day right now and that's what's really been helping her skin because I know the antibiotic is killing the bacteria all over. So I don't have to worry about it as much. But I also am using hand sanitizer after every little thing. And then when I get done with everything, I take a Lysol wipe and I wipe everything down that I've touched in my little bag. So it's constant, just clean, 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 clean. Um, so that's been our little regimen there. That has been really helpful. I do the Aquaphor three times a day as well as the ointment. I did it Monday, uh, not Monday, I did it the morning, noon, and night. And it was like morning right when she wakes up, afternoon after she eats lunch, after she wakes up from her nap, and then at nighttime before she goes down for bed. I also love this Zarbi's Baby Soothing Chest Rub. It's like Vicks, but it's a little bit more natural and it smells so good. We have been through so much of this. I need to go get another one for her. But I do this for her because I could tell that she was a little congested just from having all that stuff by her nose. So I rub this on her chest. She loves it. I even put it up to her nose, like to where she can just smell it. It doesn't touch her. But I just go like that. I go smell and she smells it and she loves it. So I highly recommend this just to have in your medicine cabinet for your children. It has been just amazing. I really like Zarbies. So... I highly recommend that just to have on you at all times. One of the best thermometers, which I have been through so many thermometers, and let me tell you, the best one hands down is the Kinza. So this is the Kinza one. It comes in this little pack right here. It looks like this. It is a speed thermometer that is also Bluetooth. So it hooks up to your phone. It could be used orally, underneath the arm, and rectally too. So they could do it all over. 
Um, I love the fact that it's a speed thermometer, like I said, so it takes the temperature really, really fast because they fight you. I do hers in her armpit and she fights you so hard. So the fact that it's a speed reader, it makes it a lot easier and it goes right to my phone. So I have an app for it. What's great is that you can add in the different kids with even their pictures on it. And it tells you the time, the date and the time of when you had it and when they've had like this one, she had a 99 mild fever. It says underarm reading. And then I did it later on and it like the next day it was like 98.4, which is no fever. So it gives you all that to track, which is great to know. So you can monitor if like, say if you're giving them Tylenol and it's not taking down that fever, you can monitor it that way too. So, and you can also show your doctor it to see like, this is her times of having her fevers and blah, blah, blah. So highly recommend this one. This is, I believe 1999. It was in the, it was a little, it was $20 basically. There's another one called VIX that is a speed reader, but it doesn't do the Bluetooth to it. That's $10. That was also another really good one. But I think this one is definitely worth the 10 extra dollars. That should definitely be in your kit with your kids. I'm, this is hands down the best one. And I have, I have like five, I have like five or six thermometers. This is the best one. So I'm very, very happy about that one. So that's what we've been doing there for her bath. This, oh my goodness, I have got to talk about this because if you have a child that has eczema, dry skin, sensitive skin, really bad diaper rash, you need this. Like you should have this on deck in your little kit of stuff 24 seven. I am going to be ordering more of these. This is the Mogi Mogi Baby. It's 100% natural, hypoallergenic, fragrance free, soothing yog yo mogi and oats bath pack. It's for dry, itchy, sensitive skin. You only get three in these. This little pack right here is $14. So it is a little bit pricey, but it is works wonders. I have bought and tried those Aveeno ones, the oatmeal bath. I hate it. That stuff sucks. This is amazing. So basically what you do with these is they come in these little packs like this. You run it underneath the water when you're filling up the bathtub. You run it underneath there for one to two minutes. So the, the bath kind of gets like a milky color and they go in it. It's great. It doesn't leave any residue in their hair or anything like that. And then what's also what I really like about it is you can use it as a sponge or like a washcloth to clean it them with. So I actually take it around and I just rub it all over Riley's like body, face, everything. I scrub her down. Her skin is so soft after doing these. Like I want to use these for myself. It is so soft. Like even Joel was like, oh my God, her skin is so soft right now. I'm like, yes. This stuff is amazing. So like I'm telling you, if you have a child that has very sensitive skin, that's getting those little bumps or eczema or anything or has really bad diaper rash, you need this. This is amazing. You can get them on Amazon. I will have a link down below. Um, there's also other areas where you could buy bigger packs of them too, uh, but they're just great. It's a bit, it even says it here. It's a natural cleanser, soothing bath soak and washcloth all in one. It helps soothe dry skin, diaper rash, eczema, leaving your baby skin soft and moist after each bath, which is so true. So I, the, the way I came about this is that one of my good friends from high school, she lives in our neighborhood, she's got two kids. She said that her friend actually went through hand, foot, mouth a few months ago with her two kids. They all three got it. And I'm like, oh my God, I could not imagine. Um, but she said that this is what really helps her and what she highly recommends. So I highly just have this in your kit, you guys. I think it's great and it makes it feel so good on their skin. So it really helps soothe it. And especially with the inflammation and everything that she's gotten from the infantigo, from the hand, foot, mouth, it has done wonders for her. So I have been using them, ordering more. That way I can have like my stash, my stash put up. I'm right now I'm giving her a bath with it every single time, which is a little pricey. Um, once that time, like once it goes like when she's cleared up, I'm definitely gonna probably do it either once every week or once every other week to kind of make them prolong a little bit longer, but I cannot rave about them enough. So I highly recommend them. The, even the company was really sweet. They DM'd me because they saw me tag them in it and they're actually a small family business, like family owned business. And I love, love supporting family owned businesses that are small companies. So they're just really sweet and really great. So I, you guys definitely check them out, but love that. So these are the things that have really helped us. So 
do the Lysol wipes. I know Lysol is a heavy, heavy chemical, but what you do is wipe things down, let them air dry for 10 minutes to make sure you kill all the viruses on them. It even gives you directions on the back. Then what you do, because it is such a harsh chemical, let it air dry and soak for that long. Then go back in with like soap and water and rinse it off again. Like say if you have like a product like or a baby like stuff, you know, that you want to wipe down like a big rubber play mat, wipe it down, let it saturate, let it soak for 10 minutes, let it air dry. And then when you're done, take some soap and water and scrub it and rinse it off. But it's the thing that's going to kill that bacteria. Um, if you guys have any recommendations of anything like all natural, I know a lot of you guys were saying seventh generation was really good. It's just that I was looking for something to really kill the viruses, not just like wipe the surface, you know? So that's why I went as extensive as using Lysol because it's such a harsh chemical. Oh my God, you guys. Joel was taking the wipes and he was wiping his hands with the Lysol wipes. And I was like, what are you doing? I go, do not put that on your skin. I go, honey, go take the antibacterial soap and wash your hands underneath hot water or warm water for 20 seconds or sing happy birthday twice. I could not believe that he was doing that. He like his face, like when I told him, I was like, you do not put that chemical on your skin like that. His face just like dropped, like he was like, oh shoot. So yeah, funny little story there. But anyway, so this is what we've been going through. Um, Riley, well, I took her to the to the doctors yesterday. So we are doing the oral antibiotic, but she is gonna be cleared for daycare, either Thursday or Friday, depending on my judgment of when I think she should be able to go back. Um, so videos will definitely be able to resume. Um, I do have a few clips that I will throw in right now of what we've had over like the course of the week. I know it's gonna make this video a little bit longer, but um, definitely, I know it's just gonna kind of show the realness to it. So here's a few clips here. Okay guys, so it's the next day. Kind of want to give you guys a little update. This is what her face looks like right now. Hi, Rai Rai. You want to go in your car? Look at me. Yeah, you want to go in your car? You guys, I like literally almost cried this morning when I picked her out of her bed. Um, her nose was so crusted over. I feel like the cream that they gave me is really helping like break up the crusties and letting her nose just kind of go just you know do its thing i'm gonna wait and see what um how it looks like tomorrow and if it's still looking really bad and not looking like it's getting any better i'm gonna call her pediatrician it's just oh it's such a bummer so this the week the past couple weeks have just been rough, but let's just hope that we're gonna get through it. But I just really wanted to spread awareness of what hand, foot, mouth is, the treatments that we use and what we help, like what helped us. I will have all that stuff linked down below, but just also really make sure if your child has been exposed to hand, foot, mouth and you are aware of it, you keep that child home. <laughs> keep the child home for three to six days waiting for symptoms to show. If symptoms do not show after a week, then they're good. Um, they could still be necessarily a carrier, but I mean, we can't, we obviously cannot keep them trapped in for a month. It's just not practical. It, the biggest thing is wash your hands like crazy. Make sure you wipe down anything that they touch or slobber on because it's going to come through with the saliva and it's going to come through with the poops and stuff like that. So you know, after every, even after changing a diaper, you better wash your hands very well. You should do that anyways. Um, but yeah, so just that's the biggest thing, just how contagious it really is. Like with Riley, I don't even think she touched Caspi, so it's just crazy how he got it. I'm wondering if maybe I became a carrier for it because I was with her so much and then I touched him and that might have done it. There is like no telling, um, but it is extremely, extremely contagious and it should be taken seriously. But I also, with the pictures of Riley, you guys are probably gonna be like, oh my God. Her face honestly was really bad because of the infantigo. I think with the both having them together is what made it so bad. And I feel so bad for her. Like Joel, I was sending him pictures cause he was actually gone the first week for work. And he's like, I just wanted to cry when I looked at the pictures. And he's like, I could not imagine just seeing her in person. In the end though, like I spoke to the pediatrician, it's gonna help them in the long run. I mean, the positive to look at it is that it is going to strengthen their immune systems and they are less likely to be more prone to allergies to normal items. So basically, if the kids are not getting sick, 
in the beginning of life, then they're not building up that immune system and then their body starts attacking normal things and they'll have like allergies just to normal everyday items or products or ingredients. And so she goes, you do want them to get sick. So I'm totally on board with that anyways, just being a teacher, like I totally understand that because it's gonna happen either now or later with her getting sick. So now she's building that immune system. Caspi is building that immune system. So we at least can look at the positive there. Um, I know people say like, oh, don't send them to daycare. Well, they're gonna get sick when they go to school anyways, when they're we're either in preschool or kindergarten. It's going to happen. You can't shelter them for life. You can't put them in a bubble as much as you want to. It is what it is and we are getting through it. Um, just the biggest thing is when there's like, when there's infections and viruses like this, it definitely can be preventable. Try to take your precautions and try to prevent them as much as you can. But if they happen, we just deal with them. And I have to say, it was really great hearing from all of you guys and with hearing your stories about it and hearing your guys' treatments and stuff like that. So if you guys have any, any other advice for any other moms or anyone that might be searching for this video and trying to learn more about hand, foot, mouth, your experiences, all that fun stuff, leave them down below. I love the community and the, t the way that we all talk to one another in the comment section. Thankfully, I still have my comments. Usually a lot of the family channels or anything with kids comments get taken away so I'm very thankful I still have mine so let's just have our discussions down below share our experiences help other moms out help other families out with dealing with it but again it clears up within about a week and then they can still be contagious for the next three weeks after that in their saliva and their spit so in their poop so you definitely want to be as cautious as you can and wash your hands Just remember really good hygiene wash your hands as often as you can no matter what just to keep all those viruses out but anyways thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful and i will see you guys in my next one bye